the most profound thing about um, dig turning products into digital products, for, from, from my perspective, is that price becomes arbitrary. So in, in the traditional world, there's a pretty strong correlation between the cost of a product to make and the price you can charge for it. You charge some, something slightly above the, you know, the, 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 the cost. And the more competition is, the less you can charge. You know, it tends to drive prices down to the marginal cost. Um, in digital products, where the marginal cost is zero, the price can be anywhere from zero to infinity. It's, compl it's a complete disconnect between the cost of production and the price, the price you charge. What this means is not that everything goes to zero. It's that you get a range. You get a much wider dynamic range of pricing from zero to, to, uh, to higher. Now, how is that possible? Um, the, the, way, the way it's possible is that you're, you know, you're using free to reach the broadest possible audience, and then you segment that audience into different ability and willingness to pay, which means you need different products. So you know, you've got Flickr, and then you've got Flickr Pro. And what you've done is you've sort of said, here's the service of utility to all people who have photographs. However, if, you, if you're really keen, if you're a super enthusiastic photographer, at some point you're going to want more space. You're going to want better features, et cetera. At that point, we convert you to paid. And because you're so invested in the service and because you care so much about it, because you are, you are kind of the alpha user, price is almost, you're al almost immaterial to you. You value the service so much that you're willing to pay almost anything. So you're willing to pay more than you might have if they had a one-size-fits-all product that was designed for everybody. That one would have had to be relatively cheap. But if zero is the, way that is the one that fits everyone, and you know, 995, 1995, 2995, whatever, becomes the one for the, the segment of enthusiasts, then you can build a good business where you charge more to some customers and less for others. What digital allows you to do is to have a range of prices. What digital requires you to do is have a range of products. Which means, you know, so, so take, so take um, uh, one of the examples I give a lot is the video game industry, which, which may seem trivial, but is a fascinating experiment in watching an industry shift from silver discs online on their own terms. So the music industry had it sort of happen to them. The software industry is kind of doing it as it shifts from disks to software as a service. But the video game industry is doing it um, driven by consumer, consumer demand. But, but um, you know, starting in China and Korea, um, is doing it um, to, to sort of reinvent what they do. And as, as games become you know, single player to massively multiplayer, um, they start to follow the World of Warcraft um, model. And it's been fascinating to watch um, uh, you know, them figure out how, to, as they go online, they tend to be free to play and then to convert 5%, 10% to paid customers. And one of the best examples is, um, it may be familiar to many people watching, is, the, um, is Club Penguin. Uh, Club Penguin is a, um, is a game for kids, an online game for kids. My kids play it, um, probably many, many people in the audience, um, their kids play it. And it's free to play, owned by Disney, bought by, if I'm not mistaken, four, seven hundred million, lots, hundreds of millions. Um, free to play, um, but at a certain point, you know, your kid is going to want a pet for their penguin called Puffle. Now, to get a pink Puffle for your penguin, you're going to have to subscribe. And so at that point, they come to the parents and they say, you know, mom, dad, can I, can I have your credit card? Or will you get your credit card out and subscribe for me? What's interesting about this is that our kids come to us all the time saying, I saw this, you know, ad on TV. Can I have it? And the answer is no, right? You know, it, you trust me, it's not as good as it looks in the ad. You won't play with it for long. You don't really want it. And we're, it's easy to say no. But when a kid comes, kid, your, your kid comes to you and says, I've been playing Club Penguin for two weeks. I built my igloo. I populated the igloo. I made these friends. I've done all this stuff. Now I want more. You know, uh, the play utility, already ascertained. The value to the kid, the, the sort of, you know, the, the, the importance in their life, already established. You're much more inclined to pay. And they get something like 20 to 30% conversion um, rates. And what's cool about that, once you're, willing, once you're willing to convert on those terms, is that you're willing to pay more. And you're, you're more likely to be happy. And your churn rates go down. So that is an example of segmentation. Within the game, they found all these different ways to charge you for more in a way that felt totally natural. It's like, I get it. I want more. I, I hardly mind paying. What free allows you to do, um, free is, is I mean, people have not, not everyone's figured this out, um, but you know, the kind of terrifying reality of free for the advertising industry is that it is an alternative to advertising. Um, rather than telling people about a product, you can let them try the product. And the nice thing about, and, 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 if you're, and if they can try the product, you don't have to take out ads. You can just let the product sell itself, speak for itself. Let it go viral. People will recommend a product that's free because there's no risk. 
uh, to the people they recommend it to that they'll that they'll be unhappy using it, or at least they'll, they'll waste, waste their money. So, um, so the potential there is that free products can go wide. Free products, you know, can become viral. They can end up marketing, them, marketing themselves, and you can end up converting 10% of a very big number at very low customer acquisition costs. So that's good. Um, however, um, here's a couple. There's a couple problems. Um, first of all, you know, uh, there's the what if you convert 1% or 0.1% or 0.01%. You know, at a certain point, the conversion rates can be so low that it almost doesn't matter how big your number is. You're still not converting enough people. The second point is that is that you know, let's say that your conversion rate is 1%, um, and you know, and, and but it's out there being used by millions of people. Well, those I, I talk about near zero marginal cost. Well, there's a difference between near zero marginal cost and zero marginal cost. Even if the product only costs 10 cents per user for you to you know, storage and bandwidth, et cetera, if it's 10 cents times you know, 10 million people, it starts to add up to real money. So Facebook and Twitter are two companies that are free to users. They got so popular and so big that, their, that those tiny marginal costs started to add up to some very significant real costs, and so they had to raise hundreds of millions of dollars to pay. Now, neither of them, in their first form, really worked hard on that conversion. On, on making money, but they're now, as they're now, they have real costs. They're starting to do it, and you're seeing a real-time experiment in the freemium, you know, the freemium model. Of course, you know, Facebook may use advertising, but Twitter probably is going to not try to avoid advertising and go for freemium uh, models. And it'll be very interesting to see what happens. What does a one percent conversion rate to paid look like at Twitter? What is a what, what would a five percent conversion rate look like? You know, you know, a ten percent conversion rate to at Twitter would be like the best business you could ever imagine. Um, now, in the, in the regular world, if you're selling muffins and you've got a 10% conversion rate, you're going out of business. But in the digital space, a 10% conversion rate can be incredibly lucrative because it's, again, 10% of a very big number.